Good morning, everyone. So, I have been in a little bit of a creative funk. I've been playing around with some things, and I kind of needed something to get me out of my funk. These are a few things that I painted this week. Wasn't real happy with how they turned out. I guess they're not too bad, but wasn't real happy. I liked him. I'm going to do him again, and he, that was like a one-minute hummingbird. But I had gotten some pencils a couple months ago, and I've played with them off and on. And these look like regular color pencils. And you think, Sherry, that's pretty boring. It's just a color pencil. But they're actually pretty fabulous. Got lots and lots of colors. I have two different trays of them. So you name the color, and I think we just about have it. But what makes these so super is, well, you'll see in a minute. I don't want to give it all away. But first of all, I wanted to kind of show you a little bit about what, what I can do with these. Um, they're great on paper. And they're great on fabric, which is a kind of cool concept. They go down like a color pencil, and then you mix them with water, and it turns into a permanent ink. So I bought some just cheap little brushes from Walmart. These are like the folk art brand. And I got these to use for when I do fabric. But I'm just gonna swatch a few on watercolor paper just so that you can see what they look like. All right, I had to go grab my watercolor brush. I'm just gonna put those off to the side. This is just some Arches hot press paper. And again, this will look a little bit different in cold press, but let me, let me do just a couple swatches. So they go down just like if you were using a colored pencil. And you would layer it like if you did color pencils. So you could go darker, push down a little bit more, or you can just keep going over it. You can also go back. When I use these on paper, I tend to push more on the side. I don't want to have a really fine tip. You can but it can um, kind of go in there and gouge the paper a little bit. So there is one of the reds. Let's see, here's a beautiful orange. And I'll just swatch a few of these colors for you. I'm not gonna do all of them, because there's 72. Now you can buy these in sets smaller. Um, but lately it's like, go big or go home. I got a lot because I like to have a variety. Um, let's do a purple. And they do have color numbers on them. So you know this is called Deep Violet. And I would recommend before you use these for a picture that you swatch them all so you can kind of see how they go and you know what kind of colors they do and how they spread because they're definitely something fun to play with oh and here's a pretty blue all right so this is just a regular princeton neptune brush nothing super super fa fabulous or fancy. I wet my brush. Dab it a little bit. And then we're just going to come in here and just start going over that. Isn't that cool? Look how it just blends. So it's almost like you have watercolor, but you have the ability to do a really fine blend that out even more. Isn't that cool looking? Now these will be permanent once they're activated with water. So if you're just putting this down and um, you're gonna make a picture and you're just gonna draw like a normal colored pencil, these uh, wouldn't be considered permanent. They have to be activated by water or some kind of a liquid. Isn't that purple? 
And they also blend together well. I'll show you with this purple and blue. Isn't it neat? Now, the, the harder you push down and the more pointy your pencil is, the more you might get a little line left. But yeah, you can blend them together. Now, once they dry, they don't lift. So that's not quite dry, but I would I could show you like once they dry, you can see a little bit here where it had dried a little bit. You can't lift the color back up like if you were to do watercolor. Let me get my brush nice and wet and I'll show you. See, it really doesn't move. It's there. I got a little bit, but I think it's because it's still, it's still a little damp. So isn't that cool? Cool little thing to play with and try. Great for dueling on the road. But when it dries, it looks like watercolor. And these are a little different than watercolor pencils you can buy because watercolor pencils you can lift and the colors aren't quite as vibrant. These have such vibrant colors. All right, so one of the things that I wanted to try because I saw that these can work on fabric is to do something on fabric. So here, I just, I haven't sewn in 20 years, just got a sewing machine. Thought I would play, so this is kind of my little practice piece that I did, um, just to play. My seams are all crooked, I have puckers. This was just for me to put down a little bit of something so that I can experiment with some stitches, some designs, looking at how the, um, the pencils are gonna work on this, because my idea is to incorporate these pencils into some fabric art. So doing mug rugs, coasters, quilts, wall hangings, things like that. Just something a little bit different, um, something to help break that creative block. So on here, I just have four fall prints. This is just 100% cotton fabric, 100% cotton muslin. And then I just love this bottom. It's all the B phrases, be prayful, be positive, let it be, be respectful, be honest, be happy. I just, I love what that stands for. And then I have that on some batting. And then when I'm done, I'll actually have this fabric on the back. I'll put a little binding on it and it'll be a little mug rug for me to stick my coffee cup, maybe a little snack. It's just gonna be something for me. It's, it's, my, it's my practice. So let's see, there's way, lots of ways you can do this. And I've, I've watched quite a few videos that say, you know, you can use water. Water will bleed out the pencils a little bit more because you know when, paper, when fabric gets wet, it kind of bleeds. Um, there's some fabric medium you can use. You can also use, according to some of the videos, like not necessarily this brand, but some aloe vera gel. So that's what I'm gonna go with. We all could use a little aloe vera in our lives, especially in the summer. And I'm gonna thin it down with just a tiny bit of water. They recommend not using good brushes for this because you really want something that's got a little tooth to it, a little bit more bite. So I got a, just a pack of cheap brushes. I think this was like a buck 50 at Walmart. Now these are all flat brushes, so I really prefer to have a round, but you know, this is an experiment. I'm gonna mix up that gel medium or that uh, aloe vera gel with the back of the brush. And you don't really want it too thin because part of this is you want it to kind of make that ink they put. So this is going to be an experiment, guys. We're going to see. I think I'm going to do just a couple pumpkins, a little couple fall little things, just to kind of get my my ideas going. And I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to freehand this one. So we'll see how it goes. But 
you know, you can draw on it just like you would draw on, draw on paper. You know, and of course the fabric moves around a little bit and you're gonna have to play with it. And, you know, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna lightly shade in. And I have a very light touch right now. I am not pressing hard at all. I'm just gonna shade it in. And this will be a short video. This is just gonna be something that I wanted to give you a little heads up, let you see some new things that I'm doing. And, and sometimes when you get into a funk, when you're doing trying to be creative and you get into a funk I think sometimes it helps to kind of step out of the box and try something different I think it's important to exercise those those creativity skills here's kind of just a loose little pumpkin now I'm gonna get this brush actually I think I'll get a littler brush I'm gonna stick it in my gel and get it nice and wet All right, let's see if any magic happens. Let's start with the center one. So you can see the color already. It's much more intense. And everything that I've watched in red, with people using this on fabric, it doesn't change the hand of the fabric. It's gonna keep the fabric as soft. Now, I have heard that if you use some of the fabric mediums, or even Mod Podge is also an option. Um, it, that can change the, the kind of the feel of how the fabric is. But man, this, this totally opens up a whole new realm of ideas on what you can do with if you're, if you're quilting or making some little fabric crafts. Now these pencils can also be used a couple other ways. Um, I could go over this pencil and I am I'm just going to find me a nice little uh, brownish color. What is this one? Matter brown. You can go over it. Look at the, how vibrant that looks when you're going over something that is already kind of dampened with that medium and I can blend that out. That's so cool. That is just awesome. I can blend that right out. The brushes are a little difficult to work with because they're kind of thick. Let's see, here's another orange. Again, this is, you know, I'm going over some, this is wet, so that line is showing up a whole lot more. Now, if you do go over something like that and it's wet, I would recommend you not hesitating to get back in here and kind of attack attacking that while it's still wet. Because you don't want it to dry. Because again, once it dries, it's permanent. You're not gonna budge this. Most people that I have seen that have done this, they don't heat set it, though you could. I probably will go over it with an iron. Probably more so to dry it than anything else. Ooh, there's the beginning of my little pumpkin. Let's see, I think I'm gonna, gonna do another one with I kind of like how these are, where they have um, the blues and the browns. So maybe I will replicate one of those. Let's see. I'm gonna put him right here. Yeah, we'll put him right here. Just kind of lightly sketch it out with these. 
that's really cool too is you know if you want to sketch out your things you don't have to worry about pencil lines because these pencil lines will all get incorporated into your pumpkin or into your your design now i am being careful not to get too close to here yet remember that's wet to myself all the time now y'all get to, to have the joy of listening to me talking to myself and we'll split it so with the fabric moving it definitely does give you a different feel when you're trying to do this let's just bring those curves in all right I'm just gonna Add just a couple of little lines here. We'll blend it out and see how it ha how it comes out. Another cool thing with this, these pencils, are not only you don't have to necessarily draw. I could also touch my brush to this, pick up. See how I picked up a little color, and I could paint it on just like that. You can also um, rub it on a board, and I have this board that's specially designed um, for this, and it's kind of grooved. I should go get it for you and show you. But you can you can scribble on that, and then you just wet that, and it's almost like you're painting with paint. So it's another really kind of nifty, nifty way to do things. And I'm looking for a nice brown. This might be a nice brown. In here, do our stem. Let's see, we'll do, we'll kind of look at that one. I'm gonna do our stem here. And you could tape this down, which would keep it from moving around as much. Now, the one good thing is I'm thinking with that having that gel. Could probably get closer to this pumpkin and the colors won't bleed as much. So I'm not a real big fan of how this is coming out. Okay, like I said, this is just an experiment for me to kind of see how the fabric works. That blue's way too blue. Guess who didn't swatch that? That's a mess up. I think I want a little smaller one. Let's see. That's the girl. I'm going to kind of let that dry a little bit because I don't want to put anything else down that's going to be real vibrant. He's starting to dry a little bit. He's still pretty damp. And also have some water here next to you so that we can wash off your brushes. I'm gonna experiment a little bit with this touching the pencil. I really like that. So maybe I should have done that with that blue. I think that really works out good. Touching the, touching the, I'm actually got a little water going right now because the water really activates it more from, from this experiment. And I keep going into my gel to wash my brush. <laughs> Some habits. Let's see if I can't do something to help with this. this other way to blue.
I guess he's okay. I still don't like that blue, but that just is what it is. Lesson learned. Get that cool little tool that I was talking about where I could um, kind of make a inky liquid and paint with. So this is by, I believe, Karen Dosh. Um, and you can see I've already used it. But the whole premise to this is like I can scribble on it and it's gritty on one side and then it's smooth on the other. And it's, a, it's considered a palette. But if I do that, then I can mix water and it turns into kind of like a paintable liquid. So I want to pick up a little gel. And then I, in, you know, you would think then I could just paint. He's still pretty damp. I'm a little scared to go into the damps. Let's just say I want to do uh, curly cue. Now, Derwent makes these ink scents into blocks, which is also much easier to do things like this. Also, if you don't want to spend the money and get a board like this, you could really use sandpaper. That would work. That would work well. I think you would probably go through your pencils much faster. But if I was using the blocks, I definitely would think about the sandpaper because uh, they're much thicker. Some curtains. Loving this. Ah, <laughs> it just hit me. Let's get rid of them. Let's do a little of this. Let's make him. Oh, that makes me a little happier. Even though I really wasn't looking forward to putting green. Green wasn't my whole idea here, but it's a good green. And using this palette just really helps. And that brown kind of turned a little red. Better brown in here. I kind of like him. I need me a better brown though, because I don't need a brown red. Let's see, where's a good brown? Brown, brown, brown. I think this is the same one I used. No, so, let's see, this is sepia. Let's see what this looks like. I'll keep the green on my brush. Oh, that's a better brown. Ah, oh, so much better. Look at that. Look at this thing. Oh, it is bleeding a little bit. Darn it. My, uh, my little stem is going to look like he's deformed. 
don't know that I can do anything to stop that. You see it's bleeding right here on the side? Let's see. Maybe that'll stop it, dry that fabric, and then I can go in and add some highlights to them. Oh, I like that brown. Sepia. I should have known too. I like sepia in the watercolor paints. And then swatching those colors. I would definitely say is another thing to do. Yeah, my stem got all blooded. Blooded. All bleeded out. But that was alright. This is an experiment. How much do I want to get into this little experiment? Hmm. Let me get. Let me, I'm thinking of. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I just told you guys this was gonna be a little shorty video, and look at what I'm doing. I'll have to speed it up for you. I'm gonna get some more sepia out. And let's see what this will either look really cool, or it'll be look really stupid. It'll be one or the other. I might regret this. I'm gonna grab one of my awesome watercolor brushes. This is one of my favorites. This is a Prince of Neptune dagger brush. I need something that's got some uh, length and some oomph. I'll just make sure I wash it really, really well. Thinking it was gonna have a little hold a little bit more. I don't think it's gonna work well. Hmm. <laughs> what to do? What to do? Get all that off of there. I'm rinse that off so I don't have gel stuck in my brush. That's such a beautiful brush. It's just gonna have to be what it is. Now there is gonna be a binding on this edge, so you probably won't even see this tree that I'm doing. As far as the trunk goes, you won't see this for my own peace of mind. I'm gonna draw it in. Now remember, I couldn't just draw on it. It wouldn't be permanent. So I actually have to activate it by wetting it. So I'm kind of wetting my brush and dipping it in the gel, hoping I can control the bleed. Well, I just want some branches that are gnarly looking.
So what do you think? How do you think that came out? Oh, I just threw a pencil in there. Duh. Pencil is not paintbrush. I gotta let the thing dry. Um, I think that actually came out pretty good. I'm not really that crazy still over that pumpkin. I think it looks a little bit better after messing with it, but still not totally keen on it. But I think actually, I'll bring it up to you. Let me get the focus right. Let's see. Bring it up to you a little bit. See if it focuses. Yeah, I think it came out well. And overall. This is something that definitely got me out of my bunk. And it's something I am excited about trying. I'm gonna put some binding on this, do some embroidery maybe, and some quilting. I got myself a little mug rug. Let me know what you think. Is this something you'd like to see more of? Let me know in the comments below. And again, if you've liked this and you think it brings value, um, go ahead and give me a like. It's free and YouTube likes that. And also, don't forget to be subscribed and click that notification bell. And oh, if you really liked it and you thought somebody else might like to see it, hit that share button. Make me happy as a clam. So until next time, thanks for watching. Y'all have an amazing day. Love y'all. Bye-bye.